When I was, um, it doesn't happen so much anymore, but when I was a, when I was a teenager, um, my dad often, you know, as dads do, used to drive me to places and you know, pick me up and, uh, and so, sometimes it would be at night, you know, I'd be out with my friends and my dad would be driving me home. Anyway, um, oftentimes as I was staring out the window um, and kind of just watching the world go by, and I would often, I used to see kind of figures, people, of what I thought were people. Um, you know, it could have been like a, they weren't actually people there. Um, but just for a few moments, uh, I saw these kind of figures, what I thought were figures. And then it would turn out to be just the way that a, a sign and a, a tree kind of overlap or a, a kind of a lamppost uh, interacting in some way with, with, with some kind of signage. And, and, in, and for some reason, my brain thought that that was a person. Um, and it kind of illustrates um, what your brain is, is doing all the time. Your brain is all, all the time receiving information, the sensory information. And um, based upon the sensory information, it's kind of updating its model and, and make, trying, to, trying to work out, you know, what's, what's most likely to be happening. You know, based upon what I know about the world, um, what's, the, what's the kind of my best hypothesis of what I'm actually looking at here? Um, and then um, it, it makes predictions based upon that best guess. Um, so, for example, in this case, my brain picked up this sign and, and perhaps you know some shadow and uh, you know a lamppost and, and whatever, um, and kind of momentarily, that thought the best explanation for that sensory information is is a person. And, and kind of what's interesting about that is that for that brief moment where I thought there was a person there, there was a person. Now what I mean by that is there was a person in my world model. My brain had decided or guessed that there was a person uh, and, and incorporated that into, into the, uh, my model of the world. And so at this kind of higher level uh, of the cortex where you know, people uh, are represented, uh, a, a person was there, you know, a person was represent, represented. The cortical columns generated a, a model of a person within the larger model of my, of my world. Now, this only lasted for a few moments, maybe, you know, a second or two. Why? You know, eventually, of course, my brain realized that there wasn't a person there. But how did it know? When did it know, ah, this, there isn't really a person there? It knew when its predictions started to fail. So what do I mean by that? We all know what a person is. When we see a person, um, I should have another example, which I'll tell you about in a minute. We all know what a person is. Um, and when we see a person, we, you know, let's say we see a person walking towards you, um, or you see a person sort of stood in front of you, and Even though you only see the person from the front, you can kind of kind of an idea of what they would look like from the side or even from the back, maybe. Um, but based upon uh, what you know about people, um, your brain kind of uh, is able to kind of predict um, this kind of sensory information it's likely to receive next. Um, so what do I mean by that? So another example um, when. In my hometown, and sometimes in the, the windows of department stores, there would be these cardboard police officer, and, and it would be, you know, the police are watching you. It was kind of, I guess, it was to d deter shoplifters. And it was qu sometimes quite startling because you'd, you'd see this kind of police officer in the window of a, a department store uh, looking out, normally where all the mannequins are, right? And there was a policeman there, and it was weird. And, and actually, if you look at it from the front, it looked exactly like a, like a person. Um, and you might actually think that that's a police officer stood there, uh, which is why it's quite, quite surprising. However, as you moved around, uh, you could see that it was flat. Now, your brain knows that people are not flat. Um, so, so although you could trick somebody into thinking that this was a, a real person as they move around, um, your brain is surprised by the sensory information because your brain knows what sensory information to predict um, having 
decided, oh, this is a police officer. So, you know, your world model at that point in time contains a police officer. There is really a, a police officer in your world model. And that allows your brain then to say, okay, as I move around towards, you know, towards the side, um, the brain knows exactly what it should expect to see. When it doesn't see that, it's surprised. It uh, receives sensory information that it didn't predict. And then it goes, ah, I must have made a mistake. I need to update my model. Uh, and then it updates the model uh, and says, okay, this is actually just a piece of, you know, it's a flat piece of cardboard with a piece, with a... A, uh, with the image, a photograph, you know, a cutout of, of a police officer. And so your world model changes. So the world model, model is, is, is corrected. Um, so, so your brain is doing that all the time, not just when you're seeing, um, uh, you know, when, you, when you're sort of seeing things incorrectly or some kind of illusion, but all the time. Your brain is receiving sensory information, deciding on what it's looking at, deciding on what the world, you know, this deciding on the contents of the world, and making a best guess about everything. You don't always realize it, but it's always doing that. And as long as its guess is correct, uh, because its best guess about um, what's in the world, the structure of the world, the contents of the world, lead to specific predictions. And if those predictions are fulfilled, then the brain basically ignores sensory information. Because it doesn't need to, right? It knows. Uh, what's in the world and it knows what that thing is doing um, and only when it gets it wrong um, does it actually need to kind of process that sensory information so that it can actually update its model because the model is incorrect clearly if the sensory information isn't correctly predicted the model must be flawed so we need to update the model and, and uh, uh, so that we so the brain can make good predictions and there's a very good example of this which I'm going to show you now okay so this if you look at this you will see this is quite a famous illusion um, and if you look at it, you will see a, it's a face, it's clearly a face, um, and in fact it is just a regular uh, white face, it's some kind of mask. Um, now, <clears throat> let's think about this. So your brain has constructed a, a model, your brain has decided, um, best guess, best hypothesis is that this is a normal uh, face uh, and your brain knows about faces. It knows what this face looks like, right? Uh, we all know about the shape of faces. Your brain knows about the shape of faces. And that leads to certain predictions. You could probably imagine now um, what that face looks like from the side if you go around. Uh, because, again, based upon the structure of the face from the front, you, can, you know what the face should look like from the side. And your brain uh, is doing that as, as well. So what we're going to do now is actually rotate this face and see if, see if we're correct. So watch what happens. As you rotate, you realize actually you were looking at the opposite side of a mask. So this is called the hollow face illusion. And it doesn't matter how many times we do this, even though you know now that it's hollow, um, your brain sees it as a, uh, a regular face because faces are one of the most kind of ingrained structures that we always that your brain knows about. You know, we, we, there's a large part of the brain is is uh, devoted to recognizing faces, even small differences between faces we can recognize. And that's why we can we can you know we know the difference between all of our friends. Um, because the brain is very good at recognizing faces. Your brain is very good at constructing models of faces, and that's you know, the face that you see here. So your brain knows that a, you know, that a face has a certain shape, that it's convex, um, and thus when you're looking at this hollow mask from the front, your model contains a normal convex face contains the face the way it should look. And that's, that's an important idea here. You, you, even though you're looking, you know you're actually looking at a hollow face, a, a convex, concave face, the model in your brain, uh, the one you're actually seeing, is the convex face, because you're always experiencing the model. Um, and, and so that leads to certain predictions. Your brain then predicts the sensory information that it should receive as the face is rotated. Uh, in other words, you should start to see the nose in profile. Um, you know, and there are obviously certain patterns of sensory information associated with that. 
However, when the face starts to rotate, then we can start to see um, something's not quite right. The brain starts to fail at making its predictions. Its predictions are wrong. Um, the, the sensory information that it predicted doesn't, uh, is not fulfilled. Uh, and so you get these what are called prediction errors. And, and these kind of light up in the brain, um, or that kind of information, uh, is passed up through the cortical hierarchy and says, this is wrong. This information is, is not predicted. You need to update your model. And very, very rapidly, your brain does update that model. And this is, the, for you, experienced as the realization, oh, it's, uh, it's hollow. It's, it's, it's the opposite side um, of a mask. OK, good. So hopefully now that kind of makes some sense. So let's have a look at this, um, how this actually works in, in the brain using our cortical column model. Okay, so here's our uh, usual uh, diagram of the cortex um, with some parts blacked out. So in this version, we have actually blacked out the lower order. So this, is, again, is usual. This is the high order. And this is the lower order that we can't see at the moment. So we're going to illustrate how this process of sensory prediction actually works. So the higher order end, you have this model, right? This is the overall model. This is what you're seeing in the world. It could be, for example, this face, right? And the overall structure of that face. Now, the this kind of overall model, as, as we've seen in, in, in this, this hollow face illusion, uh, leads to certain predictions. It leads to predictions about the patterns of sensory information that the brain should be receiving next. So this higher order model generates predictions which are used to essentially select a uh, particular pattern of lower order or medium order uh, activation. Essentially what the this high order part of the model, this high order model is predicting what it should see next within this lower order uh, region of the, the visual cortex. And then this, me this lower order or medium order uh, is then making predictions about what um, activity should be seen next in this lower order region. And this lower order region is essentially predicting the pattern of sensory information. So rather than sensory information being passed upwards through the hierarchy, uh, what's actually happening is, uh, which was we described as bottom-up information flow, right? Um, in fact, what's happening is um, you're getting predictions from the higher level are actually being fed downwards from uh, through the cortical hierarchy from top to bottom. So this is the opposite direction. This is top-down information flow. So in this particular example, um, this lower order cortical region is predicting a certain pattern of, so let's change the color here, is predicting that this is the pattern of sensory information that it will receive next. And in this case, it's correct. So the higher, or the higher order model has, based upon what it knows about the world, what it knows about faces, for example, uh, is making predictions and then predicting the pattern of sensory information that it should be receiving next if its model is correct. And if its model is correct, then it simply ignores the sensory information. So what the brain is doing is essentially trying to suppress sensory information. If the sensory information is correctly predicted, it doesn't need to know about it. And so it will, it will, it will suppress it. These, these predictions that come from the top of the hierarchy that are fed downwards through the levels of the hierarchy, when they get to the bottom of the hierarchy and they're predicting sensory information, if they're correct, um, then that information is, is simply inhibited. Um, those columns are deactivated. That, they, that information does not flow upwards. The brain doesn't need to process it. In other words, the, the upper level of the model is working perfectly fine. 
It's correctly structuring. It correctly knows about you know what's going on uh, in the world. It knows about the contents. It knows about what things you know, think what's happening basically. Uh, what objects are moving and and what and their identity, what they are. Uh, and as long as the model is working good, there's no need for um, the sensory information that's correctly predicted to actually be processed. The model doesn't need to know about it. And so that sensory information is simply ignored. It's filtered out. And if you think about it, this is a much more efficient way of working. Um, in the bottom-up um, scenario, which was kind of our classical way of thinking about perception, sensory information you know, travels up through this hierarchy and it has to be processed. Uh, and it's expensive. You know, the brain is... Uh, consumes uh, um, a lot of energy, right? 20% of, um, uh, of your energy, your body's energy, is actually utilized by your brain. So, so sending action potentials, and processing them, passing them through this visual hierarchy, it, it's not for free, you know, it, it's expensive. It's all these um, action potentials and transmission across synapses, neurotransmitters have to be released, and then they have to be cleared from the synapse and repackaged into vesicles. New vesicles have to be constructed. You know, it's expensive. Um, so it doesn't make sense for the brain to be processing information that it knows about. Uh, it knows if, if its model is correct and it can predict, correctly predict the sensory information, it doesn't need to know about that sensory information. So it doesn't need to process it. Um, and so it is uh, simply suppressed. However, if the brain is unable to make the correct prediction, its prediction is wrong, right? When I was seeing these people um, on the side of the road as I was being driven home at night, um, and then, of course, the brain makes predictions based upon its guess that there are people there. There's a person stood by the side of the road. When that sensory information is incorrect, uh, it's unable to, it makes the wrong prediction. It thinks there's a person there. That leads to certain predictions about the sensory information that it should be receiving. If it gets that wrong, then it needs to know about it. Then it needs to know about it. Um, with the hollow face illusion, um, seeing the face from the front, the brain says, okay, this is just a normal face. It's just a face, man. I know what a face is like. I know what's going to happen when, when, when you rotate the face. Whatever. I know what's going to happen, yeah? This is obvious to me. I've been, I've been processing faces all my fucking life, mate, yeah? Yeah, that's what the brain is saying to itself. Fuck, I don't need to know about this, right? Uh, and then it starts to rotate, and the brain goes, what the fuck? What's going on here, right? This is, this is wrong. Okay, <laughs> alarm bells. Um, not literally alarm bells, and that would be weird. Imagine that. Anyway, uh, but, but basically, yeah, the brain is, the prediction's wrong. The prediction's wrong, man. You know, this is not just a normal face. And then the brain, then that information has to go up to the model. Um, so, so it's only these, uh, this unpredicted information that actually travels up, um, uh, is actually processed by the, by the cortex, and uh, is processed and fed to the, the kind of the higher level model, uh, basically to say, your model's wrong, you need to update it. Okay, I think I've made my point. So in the, in the next video, we'll actually um, look in a little more detail at what actually happens um, in the brain when a, uh, a model prediction, when sense, the, predict, the predicted sense of information is actually, um, is actually incorrect. Um, and we'll actually look at how the brain actually deals with that, that information and how it processes it. So see you soon.